From the vastness of space, our planet appears as a tiny blue dot. A fragile oasis in a hostile universe. But this dot is home to Europe. The smallest and most densely populated continent on Earth and to one species that has shaped the world like no other, the volunteer. In this series, we will explore the wonders and challenges that the European Solidarity Corps enables this species to experience in one month. We will witness the beauty and drama of the cultural exchange that happens when humans from different backgrounds and countries come together to create something unique. This is their story. This is our volunteering. We are in the city of Ferrol, in the northwestern corner of Spain. A place known for its naval history, its beautiful landscape and its rainy weather. Here, among the old buildings and the busy streets, lives a group of volunteers, all from different corners of Europe, sharing a home and a mission. Every morning, the group of volunteers heads to the office of Sereth John, a non-profit organisation that works for a better world, located right in the city centre. They are keen to begin their work, but they also have a casual approach to time. Their meeting time is already late by most standards, but most of them will arrive even later, making their coordinators shake their heads in frustration. But they can forgive them because they know they do good work. Linda, for example, is already working hard on the Latvian Cultural Night, where she wants to present her home country to the community of Ferrol with its traditions, delicacies and dances. The Dutch cultural night of her colleagues Rainey and Joshua two weeks before was already a splendid success, with a great presentation that made everybody laugh, engaging games that delighted young and old alike, and of course, a taste of the Netherlands' culinary delights. One of these were the poffertjes, small pancakes that Joshua tirelessly prepared for his guests throughout the evening. So the stakes for Linda are high, but everyone at Sereth Jong is sure that the Latvian cultural night will be as successful as the others. While some of the volunteers are working in the office, others are busy with a noble mission in the urban garden in the neighbourhood of Canido. Joshua and Mala are carefully watering the existing trees, ensuring their survival and growth. Andres and Sammy are wielding their shovels with their strong muscles, digging holes for new saplings that will one day become majestic trees, adding more life and beauty to the planet. After this day of hard work, the volunteers earned a swim in the refreshing water of the Atlantic Ocean. They splash and toss a ball around, enjoying the simple pleasures of nature. For the next few days, the office is a tranquil place in the morning, but in the afternoons, it transforms into a hub of activity and learning. Like at the game night here, the Serath Jong team organizes various events for the local community of Ferrol, showcasing their passions and talents. Another afternoon, Devrim introduces his favorite game of chess, or aquedras, as the Spanish call it. He explains the basic rules and then invites the participants to compete in a friendly tournament. Age and language barriers are forgotten as everyone speaks the universal language of chess. But their mission goes beyond the board game. Every two weeks, Joshua leads a course called Speak Factor, where he challenges the participants to master the art of public speaking in various scenarios. This time they should practice how to sell things convincingly. Starting with a simple pen and moving on to more challenging tasks, such as convincing an employer to hire them or a crowd to vote for them. Who knows? 
Maybe one day the participants will make a big difference in the world only using the power of their words. As the sun starts setting over the horizon, the final evening for Linda has arrived. She is making the last preparations for the Latvian Cultural Night, together with Serath Jong's former volunteer Kulake, who came all the way from Estonia to help her with the final touches. In a few moments, the doors will open and guests will pour in, eager to experience the music, food and traditions of this small Baltic nation. Linda knows she has done everything she can to make this night a success. But will it be enough to impress her audience? Oh, and what a success it was. Everybody in the audience loved the insightful presentation of Latvia, mixed with facts and humour, telling them about the land, the people and the traditions. She also impressed them by showing them a breathtaking video of the Latvian Song Festival, a massive choir of thousands of singers expressing their joy and identity through music. And then it was time for the guests to also let some Latvian music flow through their veins by dancing typical Latvian folk dances. First, Linda and her Latvian friend Peter demonstrated the dances, and then everyone was encouraged to follow along. After all this dancing and laughter, it was time to eat. Linda had prepared some typical Latvian food for her guests, and she told them a bit about what they were going to taste. They enjoyed the culinary travel to a different country, sampling dishes such as rye bread, garlic sticks or potato pancakes. After eating and socialising, it was certain that everyone would go to sleep satisfied that night. And now we are about to witness the final challenge that the volunteers of Serath Jong faced this month. Lucy, Rainey, Joshua and Benjamin have embarked on a remarkable journey along the English route of the ancient pilgrimage known as the St. Jacob's Way. They are about to traverse nearly 113 kilometres starting in Ferrol until the famous Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. As they prepare to set off on the first morning in their rainproof outfits, Let's hear how they are feeling about this adventure. Are you guys ready for the Camino? Yeah. <laughs> they begin their trek with a smile as the clouds part and the sun warms their faces. They walk with confidence and joy and reach the end of the first day without any trouble. Are you guys ready for day two? It's yes. raining even more than yesterday, but yes. uh, we, will, we can do it. The second day begins with a big incline, followed by beautiful views and wild animals. Day three, how do we feel? Bad. Great. <laughs> it's raining again, and today we have to climb a big mountain. As they reach the midpoint of their journey, they rejoice in their remarkable achievement. But amidst the joy, there is also a somber note. Day four of the Camino, sadly we're only with three people. Fuck! Yes, we lost uh, Lucy on the way because she got sick. And then their adventure is about to be completed. Last day, guys. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. We only have 15 kilometers to go. And yeah, we're there. And yes, now we're in Santiago de Compostela. Yes, that's just As they hear the sound of the bagpipe, they know they have reached their goal. With a mixture of exhaustion and exhilaration, the volunteers mingle with the diverse throng of pilgrims converging on Santiago from various paths. Being able to accomplish all these challenges is the beauty of being a volunteer and why you should become one too.